Now, to patient judgments we appeal, and speak for Faustus in his infancy. Now he is born, a parent's base of stock, in Germany, within a town called Rhode. At riper years, to Wittenberg he went, where as his kinsmen chiefly brought him up. So much he profits in divinity, that soon he is graced with doctor's name, excelling all in sweetly can dispute the matters of heavenly theology. Swollen with the cunning of self-conceit, his waxen wings did mount up above his reach, melting. Heavens conspired his overthrow. For falling to a devil's exercise, and glutted with learning's golden gifts, he surfeits upon a cursed <coughs> necromancy. Nothing so sweet as magic is to him, which he prefers above his chiefest bliss. And this the man that in his study sits. Settle thy studies, Faustus, and begin. To sound the depth of that thou wilt profess, having commenced be a divine in show, yet level at the end of every art. And live and die in Aristotle's works. Ravished me. Bene disere es finis logesis. Is to dispute well logic's chiefest end. Affords this art no greater miracle? Then read no more. Thou hast attained that end. A greater subject is fitteth Faustus's wit. Physician Faustus, heap up gold and be eternized for some wondrous cure. Summum bonum medicinae sanitas. The end of physic is our body's health. Why then, Faustus, hast thou not attained that end? Are not thy bills hung up as monuments, whereby whole cities have escaped the plague and a thousand desperate maladies been cured? Yet art thou still but Faustus, and a man. Couldst thou not make men to live eternally, or being dead, raise them to life again? Then this profession were to be esteemed. Physic, farewell. When all is done, divinity is best. Rome's Bible, Faustus. View it well. Stipendium peccati mors est. The reward of sin is death. That's hard. <laughs> if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and there's no truth in us. Why then be like we must sin and so consequently die? Why, we must die an everlasting death. What doctrine call you this? Que sera, sera, what will be, shall be? <coughs> Divinity adieu. Physics of magicians and necromantic books are heavenly. Lights, circles, scenes, letters, characters. These are those that Faustus most desires. All things between the quiet poles shall be at my command. Kings and emperors are but obeyed in their several provinces. His dominion stretcheth farther than this. Such as father doth the mind of man. 
a sound magician is a demigod. Here tire my brains to gain a deity. Wagner, command me to the German Valdez and Cornelius. Request them earnestly to visit me. I will, sir. Their conference will be the greater help to me, but all my nears flood I near so fast. Oh, Faustus, lay that damned book aside and gaze not on it, lest it tempt thy soul and keep God's heavy wrath upon thy head. Read, read the scriptures. That is blasphemy. Go forward, Faustus, in that famous art, wherein all nature's treasure is contained. Be thou on earth as Jove is in the sky, Lord and commander of these elements. How am I glutted with conceit of this? Shall I make spirits fetch me what I please? Resolve me of all ambiguities. Perform what desperate enterprise I will. I'll have them fly to India for gold. Ransack the ocean for orient pearl. Search the newfound world for pleasant fruits and princely delicates. I'll have them read me strange philosophy. And tell me all the secrets of foreign kings. I'll have them wall up all of Germany with brass and make swift Rhine circle fair Wittenberg. I'll make my servile spirits to invent. Valdez! Cornelius! Come, make me blessed with your sage conference. Uh, Valdez! Sweet Valdez! And Cornelius, know that your words have won me at the last to practice magic and conceal dogs. Philosophy is both odious and obscure. Both law and physic are for petty wits. Tis magic, magic that hath ravished me. Then come, gentle friends, and aid me in this attempt. Faustus, these books, thy wit, and our experience shall make all nations to canonize us. May the spirits of every element be always serviceable to us three. Like lions shall they guard us when we please. If learned Faustus will be resolute, Valdez, as resolute am I in this as thy will to live. Therefore object it not. The miracles that magic doth provide will make thee vow to study nothing else. He that is grounded in astrology, enriched in tongues, and well seen in minerals, hath all the principles that magic doth require. Then doubt not, Faustus, but be renowned, and more frequent this mystery than heretofore the Dalphi oracle. The spirits, they tell me they can dry the seas and fetch the treasure from all the foreign wrecks. Yea, all the treasure our forefathers hid within the massy entrails of the earth. Then tell me, dear Faustus, what will us three want? Nothing, Cornelius. Oh, this cheers my soul. Then come and show me some demonstrations magical so that I may Conjure in some bushy grove and have these joys in full possession. Then haste thee to some solitary grove and bear wise Bacon's and Albertus's works, the Hebrew Psalter, New Testament, and whatsoever else is requisite. We will inform thee ere our conference cease. First, we will teach him the words of art, and then all of the ceremonies learned, he may try his cunning on his own. First, I'll instruct thee in the rudiments. And then wilt thou be perfecter than I. <laughs> <laughs> then come and dine with me, and after me will canvas every quiddity thereof. For ere I sleep, I'll try what I can do. For this night I conjure, though I die therefore. Come. Faustus, to make our schools ring with sick provo. That we shall presently know. Here comes his aid. How now? Cyril, where's my master? God in heaven knows. Why? Does not thou know then? Oh, 
Yes, I know, but that follows not. Go to Sira, leave your jesting and tell us where he is. That follows not by force of argument, which you, being licentious, should stand upon. Therefore, acknowledge your error and be attentive. Then you will not tell us. You are deceived, for I will tell you. Yet, if you were not dunces, you would not ask me such a question. <laughs> for is he not corpus natural? Well, well, is he is not mobile? I mean, oh, wherefore should you ask me such a question? But that I am by nature phlegmatic, slow to wrath, and prone to lechery. Excuse me. to love, I would say. If we're not for you to come within 40 points of the place of execution, though I doubt not that to see you both hanged in the what next the session. Excuse you? I would, and thus, having triumphed over you, I would set my face like a precision and begin to speak to you thus. Truly, my brethren, my master is within at dinner with Valdez and Cornelius. As this wine, if you could speak, would inform your worships. And so, the Lord bless you, keep you, and preserve you, my dear brethren. <sighs> oh, my dear Faustus, that I fear that which I long suspected, that thou art fallen into that damned art for which they two are so infamous through the world. Were he a stranger, not allied to me, the danger of his soul would make me mourn. But come, let us go and inform the rector. It may be his great counsel may reclaim him. I fear me nothing will reclaim him. Yet, let us see what we can do. Now that the gloomy shadow of night, Faustus, begin thine incantations and try if devils will obey thy hest. Seeing thou hast prayed and sacrificed to them. Within this circle is Jehovah's name, forward and backward anagrammatized the abbreviated names of holy saints and every adjunct of the heaven. Characters and signs of erring stars that enforce the spirits to rise. Therefore fear not, Faustus. Be resolute and try the utmost magic can perform. Sint mihi dii aronctius propitii Walut numen triplex Jehove, Igniae, Ariae, Aquantani spiritus salvete, Orientis princeps Beelzebub, Iferni Ardontis monarcha et demagogen, Propitiamus vos, Uta pergot, Isergot Mephistopheles draco quad tuneris, Per Jehovam, Gehaniam, E consequentem aquam quam nuc spargo, Signante crucis quadnuc, Facio et provota nostra ribse surgat nubis dicatis Mephistopheles! I charge thee to return thy shape. Thou art too ugly to attend on me. I see there's virtue in my heavenly words. Who would not be proficient at this art? <laughs> How pliant is this Mephistopheles, full of obedience and humility. Such is the force of magic and my spells. upon me whilst I live, to do whatsoe'er I command, be it make the moon drop from her spear, or the ocean to overwhelm the world. I am a servant to great Lucifer, and may not follow thee without his leave. No more than he commands must we perform. Did not she charge thee to appear to me? No. 
No, I came hither of mine own accord. Did not my conjuring speeches raise thee? Speak. That was the cause, yes. But yet per accident. For when we hear one rack the name of God, endure the scriptures unto his Saviour Christ, will we fly in hopes to obtain his glorious soul. Nor will we fly unless he uses such means whereby he is in danger to be damned. Therefore, the shortest cut to conjuring is stoutly to abjure all godliness and pray devoutly to the Prince of Hell. So Faustus hath already done and holds this principle true. <gasps> there is no chief but only Beelzebub, to whom Faustus doth dedicate himself. This word damnation terrifies not me. I confound hell in Elysium. My ghost be with the old philosophers. Believing this, tell me, what is Lucifer thy lord? Archregent and commander of all spirits. And was not he an angel <laughs> once? Yes, Faustus, and most dearly loved of God. Oh, how comes it then that he is prince of devils? By aspiring pride and insolence, which God threw him from the face of heaven. And what are you that live with Lucifer? Unhappy spirits that fell with Lucifer, conspired against our God with Lucifer, and are forever damned with Lucifer. Where are you damned? In hell. <laughs> Then how come thou art out of hell? Why, this is hell, nor am I out of it. Thinkest thou that I, that saw the face of God and tasted the eternal joys of heaven, am not tormented with ten thousand hells and being deprived of everlasting bliss? Oh, Faustus, leave these frivolous demands which strike a terror to my fainting soul. What is great Mephistopheles so passionate for, being deprived the joys of heaven? Learn thou of Faustus's manly fortitude, and scorn those joys thou shalt not possess. Go, bear these tidings to Lucifer, seeing Faustus hath incurred eternal death against Jove's deity. Say to him he surrenders up his soul so that he will spare him four and twenty years, letting him live in all voluptuousness, having thee ever to attend on me, to give me whatsoe'er I ask, to tell me whatsoe'er I demand, to slay mine enemies and aid my friends, and always be obedient to thy will. Go and return to mighty Lucifer, and meet me in my study at midnight, and resolve me of thy master's mind. I will, Faustus. Had I as many souls as there be stars, I'd give them all to Mephistopheles. Through her, I'll be great emperor of the world and I'll make a bridge through the moving air, past the ocean with a band of men. Now that I have obtained what I desire, I will live in speculation of this art. Till Mephistopheles comes again,
Oh, disgrace to my person. Zunes, boy in your face. <laughs> You've met many boys with beards, I am sure. Sira, hast thou no comings in? And goings out, too, you may see. <laughs> Alas, poor slave, see how poverty jests in its nakedness. I know the villain's out of service and so hungry that I know he would give his soul to the devil for a shoulder of mutton, though it were blood raw. <laughs> Not so, neither. I need to have it well roasted, and a good sauce to it, too, I can tell you. <laughs> Sir, uh, wilt thou be my man and wait on me, and I will make thee to go, like qui mihi discipulus? What in verse? <laughs> no, slave, in beaten silk and staves acre. Ah, staves acre. That's good to kill vermin. Then be like, if I serve you, I shall be lousy. Why, so thou shalt be, whether thou does it or no. For, Sirrah, if thou dost not presently bind thyself to me for seven years, I shall turn all the lice about thee into familiars, and make them to tear thee in pieces. Nay, you may save yourself the labor, for they are as familiar with me as if they paid for their meat and drink, I can tell you. <laughs> well, Sirrah, leave off your jesting and take these gilders. Y yes, Mary, I thank you. Now thou art to be on an hour's ordering, when, whensoever and wheresoever the devil shall fetch thee. Here, you may have your gilders again. Not none of them. Oh, not I. <laughs> now art pressed. Prepare thyself, for I shall presently raise up two demons to carry thee away. <clears throat> um, Banio, Belcher. Belcher? <laughs> and Belcher come here, I'll belch him. I'm not afraid of a devil. fancies and despair. Despair in God and trust in Beelzebub. To him, why waverest thou? Something buzzeth in mine ear. Abjure this magic and turn to God again. Why, he loves thee not. The God thou servest is thine own appetite. Where is fixed the love of Beelzebub? To him I'll build an altar and a church and offer the lukewarm blood of newborn babes. Go forward, Faustus, in that famous art. Sweet Faustus, leave that execrable art. Contrition? Prayer? Repentance? What of these? Fear means to bring thee unto heaven. 
rather illusions, fits of lunacy, which make men foolish that do use them most. Ah! 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 Sweet Faustus, think of heaven and heavenly things. No, Faustus, think of honor and of wealth. Ha! Why, the lordship of this city shall be mine when Mephistopheles shall stand by me. What power can hurt thy? Faustus, you are safe. Cast no more doubts. Come, Mephistopheles, bring glad tidings from Lucifer. Is it not midnight yet? Veni, veni, Mephistopheles! I shall wait on Faustus whilst he lives, so that he will buy my service with his soul. Already Faustus hath hazarded that for thee. But now thou must bequeath it solemnly, and write a deed of gift with thine own blood. For that security craves Lucifer. If thou deny it, I must back to hell. Nay, stay, Mephistopheles. And tell me what good will my soul do thy lord? Enlarge his kingdom. Is that the reason he tempts us thus? Solomon Viserys, socios habuise dolores. It is a comfort to the miserable to have the companions of sorrow. What but what pain have you that tortures others? As great as have the human souls of men. But tell me, Faustus, shall I have thy soul, and I will be thy slave and wait on thee, and give thee more than thou hast wit to ask? Aye. I'll give it thee. Then, Faustus, stab thine arm courageously, and bind thy soul, that at some certain day, great Lucifer may claim it as his own, and then thou be as great as Lucifer. Lo, oh, Mephistopheles, for the love of thee, Faustus hath cut his arm and with his proper blood assures his soul to Lucifer, regent of perpetual night. View here the blood that trickles from thine arm, and let it be propitious for my wish. But Faustus, write it in manner of a deed of gift. Aye, I do so, but Mephistopheles. My blood congeals, and I can write no more. I'll fetch thee fire to dissolve it straight. What might the stain of my blood portend? Is it unwilling that I should write this bill? The my strings are not, then write afresh. Faustus gives to thee his soul. Oh, there, it's stained. Why should it not? Is not thine soul thine own? Then write again. Faustus gives to thee his soul. See, Faustus. And now my blood begins to clear again. Now will I make an end immediately. It is finished. The bill is ended, and Faustus hath bequeathed his soul to Lucifer. What will not I do to obtain his soul? I'll fetch him somewhat to delight his mind. What means this show? Speak, Mephistopheles. Nothing, Faustus. 
but to delight thy mind and let thee see what magic can perform. But may I raise these spirits when I please? Ay, Faustus, and do greater things than these. All right. Then take this deed, a gift of body and soul, that both of us perform all articles and covenants. Faustus, I swear by hell and Lucifer to effect all promises between us both. Then, Mephistopheles, hear me read it. On these conditions following, first, that Faustus may be a spirit in form and substance. Secondly, that Mephistopheles shall be his servant and be by him commanded. Thirdly, that Mephistopheles shall do for him and bring him whatsoever he desires. Fourthly, that he shall be in his chamber or house invisible. Lastly, that he shall appear to the said John Faustus at all times, in what shape and form soever he pleases. I, John Faustus of Wittenberg, doctor, by these do present, give both body and soul to Lucifer, Prince of the East, and his minister Mephistopheles. And furthermore, grant unto them that four and twenty years being expired, and these articles above written being invalid, full power to fetch and carry the said John Faustus, body and soul, flesh and blood into their habitation, wheresoever, by me, John Faustus. Speak, Faustus. Do you deliver this as your deed? Aye. Give the devil good of it. Now then, Faustus, ask me what thou wilt. <laughs> First, I will question thee about hell. Now tell me, where is the place that man calls hell? Under the heavens. <laughs> Aye, so are all things else, but whereabouts? Within the bowels of these elements, where we are tortured and remain forever. Hell hath no limits. Nor is it circumscribed to one self place. But where we are is hell, and where hell is, there shall we yet be. And to be short, when all the world dissolves and every creature shall be purified, all places shall be hell that are not heaven. I think hell's a fable. I think so still until experience change thy mind. <laughs> Why dost thou think that Fausta shall be damned? I of necessity. For he is the scroll in which thou hast given thy soul to Lucifer. Have you found it? And body too. And what of it? I think that Faustus is so fond to imagine that there is any pain after this life? No. These are trifles and mere old wives' tales. But I am an instance to prove the contrary. For I tell thee I am damned and now in hell. Nay, and this be hell, I'll willingly be damned. <laughs> what? Eating? Sleeping? Walking? Disputing? Leaving this, let me have a wife, the fairest maid in all of Germany, for I am wanton and lascivious and cannot live without a wife. Marriage is but a ceremonial toy. And if thou lovest me, think no more of it. She whom thine eye shall like, thy heart shall have. Were she as chaste as was Penelope, as wise as Sabre, or as beautiful as was bright Lucifer before his fall. Yeah. Take this book. Or is it well? The iterating of these lines brings gold. The framing of the circles on the ground brings thunder, whirlwind, storm, lightning. Pronounce this thrice devoutly to thyself, and men in harness shall appear to thee. 
Ready to execute with thou commandest. Thanks, Mephistopheles, for this sweet book. This will I keep as cherry as my life. I've gotten one of Dr. Faustus's conjuring books. <laughs> and now we'll have such knavery ass passes. <laughs> what? Dick! <laughs> Look to the horses till I come again. What? Robin, you must come away and walk the horses. <laughs> I walk the horses. I scourge faith. I have other matters in hand. Let the horses walk themselves, and they will. Ah, <laughs> uh, per se. Ah. Uh. Duh. <laughs> oh, per se. Oh. Oh? Demi organ gorgon. Gorgon? Oh, keep it away from me, oh thou illiterate and unlearned hostler! <laughs> Snails, what dost thou got there? A book? Why, thou canst not tell ne'er a word on't. That thou shalt see presently. Keep out of the circle, I say, lest I send you to the Austria with a vengeance. That's like faith. You had best keep your foolery, for when my master come, he'll conjure you, faith. My master conjure me. I'll tell thee what. And my master come here, I'll clap his fair pair of horns on his head, as thou e'er seenest in thy life. Thou needst not do that, for my mistress hath done it! Ha 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 There be those of us who have laid into the matters of other men, if they were disposed to talk. A plague take you! I thought you did not sneak up and down after her for nothing. But I prithee you, tell me a good sadness, Robin. Is that a conjuring book? Do but speak what thou'lt happen to do, and I'll do it. If thou'lt dance naked, put off thy clothes, and I'll conjure thee about presently. <laughs> or, if thou'lt but go to the tavern with me, we'll have white wine, red wine, claret wine, sack, muscadine, mumsy, whip and crust. Hold, belly, hold. <laughs> And we'll not pay one penny for it. Oh, brave! Brithy, let's do it presently, for I am dry as a dog. Come then! <laughs> let's away! <laughs> Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Thine own seeking, Faustus. Thank thyself. Thinkest thou that heaven is such a glorious thing? I tell thee, Faustus, it's not half so fair as thou or any man that breathes on earth. And how provest thou that? Tis made for man, then he's more excellent. If twas made for man, twas made for me. I will renounce this magic. <laughs> 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 Faustus, repent, yet God will pity thee. Thou art a spirit! God cannot pity thee. Oh! oh. What was it in my ear? I am a spirit. Be I a devil, God may pity me. God will pity me if I repent. I, but Faustus never shall repent. My heart is hardened. Scarce can I name salvation, faith, or heaven. Swords, poisons, halters, and venom steel are laid before me to dispatch myself. Long ere this I have done the deed, had no sweet letter, comfort, deed of despair. Why should I die then, or basely despair? 
Oh. <laughs> I am resolved. Faustus shall not repent. Come, Mephistopheles. Let us dispute again a reason of the divine astrology. Now tell me, are there many spheres or heavens above the moon? Are all celestial bodies but one globe, as in the substance of this centric earth? As are the elements, such are the heavens. Even from the moon into the imperial orb mutually folded in each other's spheres, or who jointly move upon one axle tree, whose term is termed the world's wide pole. Nor are the names of Saturn, Mars, or Jupiter famed, but are erring stars. But tell me, have they all one motion both set to a tempore? All move from east to west in four and twenty hours on the poles of the world, but differ in their motions upon the poles of the zodiac. These slender questions Wagner can describe. He knows not the double motion of the planets, that the first is finished in a natural day, the second thus Saturn in 30 years, Jupiter in 12, the Mars in 4, the Sun, Venus, and Mercury in a year, and the Moon in 28 days. These are freshman questions. <laughs> but tell me, Hath every spear a dominion or intelligentia? Aye. And how many spears or heavens are there? None. The seven planets, the firmament, and the imperial heaven. Huh. Well, I am answered. Now tell me, Mephistopheles. Who created the world? I will not, Faustus. Sweet, sweet Mephistopheles, tell me. Provoke me not, Faustus. Billis, have I not bound thee to tell me anything? I, that is not against our kingdom, this is. Thou art damned, think thou of hell. Think, Faustus, upon God who created the world. Remember this. I go a cursed spirit to ugly hell. Tis thou hast damned distressed Faustus' soul. <laughs> Is it not too late? Christ, my savior, my savior. Help to save distressed Faustus's soul. Christ cannot save thy soul, for he is just. There is none but I. What art thou that lookest so terribly? I am <laughs> Prince of Hell. Oh, Faustus, they have come to fetch thy soul. We have come to tell thee. Thou dost be us. Thou callest a quest contrary to thy promise. Thou shouldst not think. On God. Do not think, think on God. Think on, on the devil. devil. Pardon. 
pardon him for this, and Faust disputes henceforth never to look to the heavens. So thou shalt show thyself an obedient servant, and we will highly gratify thee for it. We are come from hell in person to show thee some pastime. Sit down, and thou shalt behold the seven deadly sins appear before thee in their proper shapes and likeness. That sight will be as pleasant to me as paradise was to Adam on the first day of creation. Talk not of paradise or creation, but mark the show. Now, Faustus, question them of their names and dispositions. That shall I soon. What art thou the first? Thou the third. Mother, I leapt out of a lion's 
mouth when I was scarce an hour old, and ever since have run up and down the world with this rapier, wounding myself. My parents are dead. <laughs> and a fellow of many, they have left me. Oh, but a small pension. And that buys me 30 meals a day and 10 beavers. <sighs> a small trifle to suffice nature. <clears throat> I come of a royal pedigree. <clears throat> My father was a gamut of bacon. My mother, a hogshead of claret wine. <laughs> oh, my godfathers were these. Peter pickled herring. And Martin, Marshall Mars beef. <laughs> oh, but my godmother, she was an ancient gentlewoman. Her name was Marjorie March Beer. Now, Faustus, thou hast heard my progeny. Wilt thou bid me to <clears throat> supper? <laughs> Not I. <laughs> then the devil choke thee. Choke thyself, glutton. What art thou the sick? was begotten on a sunny bank. <laughs> hey <-o. laughs> I won't say a word more for a king's ransom. <laughs> What are you, Mistress Minx? The seventh and last. Who? I, sir? I am 
one that loves an inch of raw mutton better than an L of fried stockfish. And the first letter of my name begins with L. Away to hell! Away! Oh, how this sight doth delight my soul. <laughs> you see, Francis, in hell is all now delights. Oh, why should I go and see hell and return again safe? How happy were I then? Oh, Faustus, you shall. At midnight, I will send for thee. Now, Faustus, farewell. Think on the devil. Think on the devil. Farewell, great Lucifer. Come, Mephistopheles. Learned Faustus, to find the secrets of astronomy, graven in the book of Jove's high firmament, did mount him up to scale Olympus's top, where sitting in a chariot, burning bright, drawn by the strength of no dragon's neck, he views the clouds, the planets, and the stars, the tropic zones, and the quarters of the sky, from the bright circle of the horned moon, even to the height of the heavens. And whirling round with this circumference, within the concave compass of the pole, from east to west, his dragon swiftly glide, and in eight days he bring him home again. Not long did he stay in his quiet house to rest his bones from his weary toil, but new exploits do hail him out again, and mounting up on a dragon's back that with his wings does part the subtle air, he is gone to prove cosmography that measures coasts and kingdoms of the earth. <laughs> Having now, my good Mephistopheles, as erst to thy command, conducted me within the walls of Rome. I have my Faustus, and for proof thereof have attended Faustus in goodly palace as a poet. I hope his holiness did bid us welcome. Thou, Mephistopheles, thou pleasest me. And whilst I'm here on earth, let me be cloyed with all the things that delight the heart of man. That Faustus's name, whilst this bright flame doth stand, may be admired through the furthest land. Tis well said, Faustus. Come, stand by me. For the great Charles, emperor of old Germany, has bid thee to him to shake thy hand and revel in my art. Nay, stay, my gentle Mephistopheles. Grant me my request, and then I'll go. Thou knowest within the compass of eight days we there viewed the face of heaven, earth, and hell. So high our dragon soared into the air that, looking down, the earth appeared no bigger than my hand in quantity. There did we view the kingdoms of the earth, and what might please mine eye, I there beheld, that this proud pope did Faustus's cunning see. It was so, my Faustus. Come, brethren, <laughs> let us approach our business with good devotion. Cursed be he who stole his holiness's meat from the table!
words. devil can answer for the stealing of this same cup, for the vintner follows at the hard heels. Tis no matter, let her come. And she follow, I'll conjure her as she was never conjured in her life. <laughs> let me see the cup. Here it is. Yonder, she comes. Now, Robin, now I never show that cunning. Are you here? I'm glad I found you. You're a couple of fine companions. Pray, where's the cup you stole from the tavern? How, how, we steal a cup? Take heed what you say, for we look not like cup stealers, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Never deny it, for I know you have it, and I'll search you. Aye, aye, search me and spare not. Hold the cup, Dick. <laughs> come, come, search me, search me. <laughs> come, Sira, let me search you now. Hey, hey, do, do. Hold the cup, Robin. <laughs> I fear not your searching. We scorn to steal your cups, I can tell you. <laughs> Never outface me for the matter, for sure the cup is between you two. Nay, there you lie, tis beyond this boat. <laughs> oh. A plague take you. I thought twas your knavery to take it away. Come, give it to me again. I am much. When can you tell? Dick, make me a circle and stand close at my back, and stir not for thy life. Vintner, you shall have your cup anon. <laughs> Say nothing, Dick. <laughs> ah, per se, ah. Demigorgon, Belcher, and Mephistopheles. By these villains' charms. From Constantinople have they brought me now, only for the pleasure of these infernal slaves. My lady, <laughs> you've made a sure journey of it. Uh, would it please you to take a shoulder of mutton to supper and a tester in your purse and be on your way? Hey, I pray you on to leave, for we called you by your chest, I promise you. <laughs> To purge the rashness of this cursed deed, first be thou turned to this ugly shape. For apish deeds, transform to an ape! <laughs> oh, brave! An ape! I pray, let me have the caring of him about, so that I may show some tricks! <laughs> and so thou shalt. Be thou transformed to a dog and carry him upon thy back. Go away. Be gone. A dog. Excellent. Let the maids look well to their porridge pots. For I'll into the kitchen presently. Come, Dick, come! <laughs> the burning fire, I'll wing myself and forthwith fly again unto my Faustus, to the Emperor's court. What ho! Officers, gentlemen, hide to the presence to attend the Emperor. Good, Frederick. See the rooms be voided straight. His Majesty is coming to the hall. Go back and see the state in readiness. 
But where is Faustus? Will his grace not consort the emperor? Ah, yes, the German conjurer comes anon. The learned Faustus, the fame of Wittenberg, the wonder of the world for magic art. And he intends to show great Charles the race of all his stout progenitors, and bring in presence of his majesty the royal shapes and perfect semblances of Alexander and his beauteous paramour. <laughs> and uh, where is Benvolio? Fast asleep, I warrant you. She took her rouse with stoops of Rhenish wine so kindly yesternight that all this day the slugger keeps her bed. Look, look, her window is open. We'll call to her. What ho! Benvolio! <laughs> what a devil ill you two! Speak softly, lest the devil hear you. For Faustus at the court is late arrived, and at his heels a thousand furies wait to accomplish whatsoe'er the doctor pleads. What of this? Come, leave thy chamber first, and thou shalt see this conjurer perform such rare exploits before the Pope and royal emperor, as never yet was seen in Germany. Come, wilt thou see their sport with us? Not I. <laughs> wilt thou stand in thy window and see at them? I can I fall not asleep in the meantime. <laughs> the emperor is at hand, who comes to see what wonders by black spells may compass be. Well, go you attend the emperor. I am content for just this once to thrust my head out at a window. For they say, if a man be drunk overnight, the devil cannot harm him in the morning. Ugh, if that be true, I have a charm in my head, shall control him as well as the conjurer, I warrant you. Now, silence, all of you. <laughs> Wonder of men, renowned magician, thrice learned Faustus, welcome to our court. This deed of thine shall add more excellence unto thine art than if by powerful necromatic spells thou couldst command the world's obedience, forever be beloved of Charles. Thou shalt be famous through all of Italy, <laughs> and honored of the German emperor. <laughs> These gracious words, most royal Charles, shall make Faustus to his utmost power both love and respect the German emperor. Reproof for all, if it so please your grace, the doctor stands prepared by power of art to cast his magic charms that shall pierce through the ebon gates of ever burning hell and hail the stubborn furies from their cave to compass whatsoe'er your grace commands. <laughs> what? He speaks so terribly, but for all that, I do not so greatly believe him. He looks as a conjurer, as the Pope to a cheesemonger. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> then, Faustus, as thou didst late promised us, we would behold that famous conqueror, great Alexander and his paramour. Alexander, chief spectacle of the world's preeminence, the bright shining of whose glorious axe lightens the world with his reflecting beams. As when I hear but motion made of him, it grieves my soul. I never saw the man. If thou therefore, by cunning of thy art, Canst raise this man from hollow vaults below, where lies entombed this famous conqueror, and bring with him his beauteous paramour, both in their right shapes, gesture, and attire, they used to wear during their time of life. Thou shalt both satisfy my just desire, and give me cause to praise thee, whilst I live. 
Your Majesty shall see them presently. Mephistopheles away, and with a solemn noise of trumpet sound, present before this most royal emperor, great Alexander and his beauteous paramour. Faustus, I will. Well then, Master Doctor, if your devils come not away quickly, thou shalt have me asleep presently. Soons! I could eat myself for anger. To think, I have been made such an ass for all this while, to stand gaping at the devil's governor and can see nothing. <laughs> I'll make you feel something enough. <clears throat> if my art fail me not, your grace, I must forewarn your majesty that when my spirits present the royal shapes of Alexander and his paramour, your grace demands no question of the king, but in dumb silence let them come and go. Be it as Faustus please, we are content. I, I, and I am content too, and thou bring Alexander and his paramour before the emperor. I'll be a Teon and turn myself to a stag. And I'll play Diana and send you the horns presently. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your grace, you do forget yourself. These are but shadows and not substantial. Oh. Pardon me, my thoughts were so ravished at the sight of this renowned emperor that in my arms I would have compassed him. But Faustus, since I may not speak to them, to satisfy my longing thoughts at full, let me this tell thee. I've heard it said while this fair lady lived on earth, she had on her neck a little wart or moat. How may I prove that saying to be true? Your majesty may boldly go and see. Faustus, we see it plain, and in this sight thou better pleasest me than if I gained another monarchy. Away, be gone! See, see, my gracious lord, what strange beast is yon? strangely faceted upon the head of young Benvolio. What, is she asleep or dead? Oh, she sleeps, my lord. <laughs> but dreams not of her horns. <laughs> oh, this sport is excellent. We'll call and wake her. What ho! Benvolio! Mm, a plague be upon you! Let me sleep a while. I blame thee not to sleep too much, having such a head as thine own. <laughs> Look up, Benvolio, tis the emperor that calls. The emperor? But... Oh, Zeus! My head! <laughs> Nay, and thy horns hold, tis no matter for thy head, for well, that's on sufficiently. <laughs> Why? How now, Sir Knight? What? Hang from the horns, most horrible thigh fie. Pull in your head for shame. Let not all the world wonder about you. Oh, Zoons, Doctor, this is your villainy. Oh, say not so. I thought the uh, 
the doctor had no art, no skill, no cunning to present before this most royal emperor, the, my, the mighty monarch, warlike Alexander and his paramour. And if I do it, you are straight resolved in Actian shape to turn a stag. Therefore, my lord, to present you, I shall raise a kennel of hounds that shall hunt her as all her footmanship scarce prevail to keep her bloody carcass from their fangs. Ho! Bellamy! Organon! Astaroth! Hold to raise up a kennel of devils, I think, and then good, my lord, and treat for me. It's blood. I cannot bear to endure these torments. Then, Master Doctor, let me entreat you remove her horns. She's done penance now sufficiently. Not so much to the injury done to me. To present your majesty with some mirth, have Faustus justly requited this injurious knight. Which be all that I desire, I am content to remove her horns. Mephistopheles, transform her. And hereafter, look you speak well to scholars. <laughs> Speak well of ye, blood, and scholars be such cuckold makers to clap horns of honest men's heads for disorder. I'll ne'er trust smooth faces and small roughs more, and be I not revenge for this, would I might be turned to a gaping oyster and drink nothing but salt water! <sighs> In recompense of this, <laughs> thy high desert, while the emperor lives, thou shalt command the state of Germany, and live beloved of mighty Charles. Now, my gentle Mephistopheles, the restless course that time doth run with calm and silent foot, Pause for the shortening of my days and thread of vital life. <coughs> Let us make haste to Wittenberg. Nay, sweet Benvolio, let us sway thy thoughts from this attempt against the conjurer. <laughs> Away! You love me not to urge me thus. Should I let slip so great an injury when every servant all grew just in my wrongs? And in their rustic gambles proudly say, Benvolio's head was graced with horns today! <laughs> oh, may these eyes never shut till by my sword I have that conjure slain. If you would aid me in this enterprise, then drop with your weapon and be resolute. If not, depart. Here will Benvolio die. But Faustus' death shall quit my infamy. We will stay with thee, betide with me, and kill that doctor if he come this way. Then, gentle Frederick, you will hide yourself, close in an ambush there behind the trees. Yes, whoever kills him shall have gold <coughs> and endless love. <laughs> <laughs> My head is lighter than it was by the horns, but my heart's more ponderous than my head, and pants till I see that conjurer dead. Where shall we place ourselves, Benvolio? Here will we hide ourselves to bide the first assault. But were that damned hellhound but in place, thou should soon see me quit my foul disgrace. Close, close, the conjurer's at hand. Let us go and strike the peasant down. Mine, that honor be, then. Now, sword, strike home. For horns he gave, I'll have his head anon. See, see, he comes. I received you, sir, except at least forty dollars. <laughs> Friend, thou canst buy a horse for such small a price. I have no good need to sell him. But 
If thou breakest him for ten dollars more, thou no. can take him. Because I see that I have a good mind to him. I beseech you, sir, accept of this. I am a very poor man. And I've lost, <laughs> and I've lost very much of late my horse flesh, and this bargain will set me up again. Well, I will not stand with thee. Give me the money. Now, Sirach, I must forewarn you that you may ride him o'er hedge and ditch and spare him not, but do you hear? Ride him not into the water. How, sir? Not into the water? Why will he not drink of all waters? No, he will drink of all water, but ride him not into the water. O'er hedge and ditch, or where thou wilt, but not into the water. Now go bid the hostler deliver him on to you, and remember what I said. Oh, I warrant you, sir, a joyful day! Now am I a made man forever! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Faustus, what art thou but a man condemned to die? My fatal time draws to a final end. Despair doth drive distrust into my thoughts. Confound these passions in a quiet sleep. Christ did call the thief upon the cross. Then rest thee, Faustus, quiet in conceit. No word. ends all. Hell, take his soul. His body thus must fall! <laughs> Groan you, Master Doctor. Break me as hard as it grows. Dear Frederick, see? Thus will I end his griefs immediately. Strike with a willing hand. <laughs> The devil is dead. The theories now may laugh. Was this that stern aspect, that awful frown, that made the grim monarch of infernal spirits tremble and quake at his charming commands? Was this that damned head, whose art conspired Benvolio's shame before the emperor? Aye, that's the head. And there the body lies, justly rewarded for his villainies. Come, let us devise how we may add more shame to the black scandal of his hated name. First, on his head, in quittance of my wrongs, I'll nail huge forked horns and let them hang within the window where he yoked me first, so that all may see my just revenge. What use shall we put his beard to? We'll sell it to a chimney sweeper. It will wear out ten birchen brooms, I warrant you. <laughs> what shall his eyes do? will pull out his eyes, and they shall serve as buttons to his lips to keep his tongue from catching cold. An excellent policy. And now, sirs, having divided him, what shall the body do? Suit! The devil's alive again! Give this head back for God's sake! Nay! Keep it! I'll have heads and hands, I all your hearts to recompense this deed. Knew you not traitors? I was limited to four and twenty years to breathe on this earth. And had you cut my body with your swords, or hewed my flesh and bones as small as sand, yet in a minute had my spirit returned to me, and I made a man free from harm. But wherefore do I dally my revenge? Mephistopheles? Go, horse these traitors on your fiery path, and mount aloft with them as high as heaven. Then pitch them headlong to the lowest hell. Yet say, the world shall see their misery, and hell be glad with their treachery. Go, 
Bellamy, take this Kate of Pence and hurl her into some lake of mud and dirt. Take thou this other and drag him through the woods among the prickling thorns and sharpest briars. Whilst with my gentle Mephistopheles, this traitor flies onto some steepy rock that rolling down may break every bone in her body as she intended to dismember me. Fly hence, dispatch my charge immediately. Pity us, gentle folks, to save our lives. Away. Must needs go to the devil drives. No! No! Why, no! how now, Wagner? What news with thee? Treat your company, and has sent some of his men to attend on you with provisions for your journey. The Duke of Van Holt, an honorable gentleman, one to whom Faustus must be generous with his cunning. Then come away. in her debt, but, but say nothing. See if she have forgotten me. Who is this that stands so solemnly by himself? Credit stand still. I, as does your debt. But methinks you make no haste to wipe it out. Why, hostess, I say, fetch us some beer. You shall presently. Huzzah! <laughs> Sirs, what shall we do now? 
very first, I'll tell you the bravest tale, how a conjurer served me. You know, Dr. Faustus, a blank taken. Here some odds have cause to know him. Now, sirs, you shall hear how villainously he injured me. I went to him yesterday to buy a horse of him, and he would by no means sell him under forty dollars. Now, sirs, I know him to be such a horse as would run over hedge and ditch and never tire. I gave him his money. Now, when I had my horse, Dr. Faustus made me ride him night and day and spare him no time, but, quoth he, ride him not into the water. <laughs> Now, sirs, I, thinking some great mystery had been in the horse, what did I but ride him into a great river? <laughs> and when I came just in the midst, the horse vanished from under me, and I sat straddling upon a pile of hay. <laughs> oh, brave doctor. Or one of his devils turned me into the likeness of a dog's face. And me to an ape's face. <laughs> You. Let's into another room and drink a while, then go seek out the doctor. <laughs> Thanks, Master Doctor, for these pleasant sights. Nor know I how to sufficiently recompense your great desserts, the sight whereof such delighted me that nothing in the world could please me more. I do think myself highly recompensed in that it pleaseth your grace for the sight of which Faustus hath done. But gracious lady, it may be that you've taken no pleasure in these sights. Therefore, I pray you tell me, what is the thing you most desire? Be it in the world that shall be yours. I've heard great-bellied women do like things that are rare and dainty. <laughs> True, Master Doctor. And since I find you so kind, I will make known unto you what my heart desires to have. And were it now summer, as it is January, a dead time of the winter, I would request no better meat than a dish of rice. This is but a small matter. Mephistopheles, go. I will do more than this for your content, madam. Hmm. Hear you now. Taste you these. For they should be good, because they come from a far country, I can tell you. This makes me wonder, more than all the rest, how at this time of year, when all trees are barren of his fruit, from whence you had these ripe grapes? Well, <laughs> my gracious lord, the whole year is divided into two circles around the world, so that when it is winter with us, in the contrary circle, it is summer with them, such as in Saba, India, and other countries that lie far east, from whence they have fruit twice a year. When, with the swift spirit that I have, had these grapes brought, as you can see. Trust me, they are the sweetest grapes that e'er I tasted. What rude disturbers have we at the gate? Go, pacify their fury and set it open. Then demand of them what they will have. What would 
they have? They all cry out to speak to Dr. Faustus. Aye, and we will speak with him. Will you, sir? Go, commit the rascals. Commit with us? He was as good commit with his father as commit with us. I do beseech your grace. Let them come in, they'll be good for a merriment. Do as thou wilt, Faustus, I give thee leave. I thank your grace. <laughs> Now, good friends. Hey, you're too outrageous. Come here. I have procured your pardons. Welcome all. Nay, but we'll be welcome for our money, and we will pay for what we take. What ho! Gives half a dozen beer and be hanged! Nay, hark you! Can you tell me where you are? I'm Mary. Can I? We are under heaven. Aye, but, <laughs> Sir Saucebox, know you in what place? I am. It's good enough for us to drink in. Zoons, fill us some beer, or else we'll break all the barrels in your house and bash out your brains with your bottles. <laughs> Be not so furious. You shall have beer. Huzzah! <laughs> My grace, I content you give me leave. Well, content your grace. With all my heart, kind doctor, please thyself. Our servants and our courts at thy command. I thank your grace. Then fetch some beer. Not do you remember a horse courser you sold a horse to? Yes, I remember I sold one a horse. Not do you remember how you bid he should not Ride into the water. <laughs> yes, I do very well remember that. Not do you remember how you cousined me by turning that horse into a bale of hay? Do you remember how you made me wear an ape's face? Ah, you've forgotten me. Do you remember the face of a duck? with all the love and kindness we may. His artful sport drives all sad thoughts away. I think my master needs to die shortly. He's made up his will and given me his wealth, his house, his goods, his store of gold plate, besides 2,000 ducats ready coin. I wonder what it means. If death were nigh, he would not frolic thus. He is now at supper with the scholars, where there is such belly cheer as Wagner in her life never saw the light. Good friend. <laughs> and see, here they come. Be like the feast is ended. <laughs> now, Master Dr. Faustus, since our conference on fair ladies, which were the beautifulest in the world, we have determined between ourselves that Helen of Greece was the admirablest lady that ever lived. Therefore, Master Doctor, if you would do us so much favor as to let us see that peerless dame of Greece, who all the world admires for majesty, we would consider ourselves much beholding unto you. Oh, friends, 
It is not Faustus's custom to deny the just request of those that wish him well. Therefore, you shall behold that peerless dame of Greece. No other words of pomp or majesty than when Sir Paris brought her across the seas and brought the spoils to rich Dardania to be silent, for danger is in words. Was this fair Helen, whose admired worth made Greece with ten years' war afflict for Troy? Too simple is my wit to tell her worth, whom all the world admires for majesty. Sweet Faustus, leave this damned art, this magic that will charm thy soul to hell and quite bereave thee of salvation. Though thou hast offended like a man, do not persevere in it like a devil. Yet, yet thou hast an amiable soul. If sin by custom grow not into nature, then, Faustus, will repentance come too late. Then, Thou art banished from the sight of heaven. No mortal can express the pains of hell. It may be this my exhortation seems harsh and all unpleasant, let it not. For gentle son, I speak it not in wrath or envy of thee, but in tender love, in pity of thy future misery, and do so have hope that this my kind rebuke, checking thy body, may amend thy soul. Where art thou, Faustus? What hast thou done? Hell claims his right, and with a roaring voice says, Come, Faustus, thine hour is almost come. And Faustus will come to do thee right. Oh, stay, stay, Faustus, stay, thy desperate steps. I, I see an angel hover over thy head and with a vial full of precious grace offers to pour the same into thy soul. <clears throat> then call for mercy and avoid despair. Oh, friend, I feel thy words to comfort my distressed soul. Leave me a while to ponder on my sins. Faustus, I leave thee. But with grief of heart. Fearing the enemy of thy hapless soul. Accursed Faustus. Wretch. What hast thou done? I do repent, yet I do despair. But hell strives with grace for conquest in my breast. What shall I do to shun the snares of death? Thou traitor, Faustus. No, no. I arrest thy soul for disobedience against my sovereign lord. You halt, or all in peace, meal to thy flesh. I do repent, I e'er offended him. Pardon me for my unjust presumption, and with my blood I will conform the former vow I made. Do it then, Faustus, with unfeigned heart, lest greater dangers do attend thy drift. One thing more, good servant. Let me glut the longing of my heart's desire, that I may have on to my paramour, that heavenly Helen, which I saw of late, 
whose sweet embraces may extinguish clean the thoughts that do dissuade me from my vows and help me keep the oath I made to Lucifer. This, or what else my Faustus shall desire, shall be performed in the twinkling of an eye. Was this the face that launched a thousand ships and burnt the topless towers of Ilium? Come, Helen, make me immortal with a kiss. Her lips suck forth my soul. See where it flies. Come, Helen, make me immortal again. Here will I dwell, for all is dross that is not Helena. I will be Paris, and instead of Troy shall Wittenberg be sacked. I, I will battle with weak Menelaus and wear thy colors on thy bloomed crest. I, I will wound Achilles in the heel, then return to Helen for a kiss. How art fairer than the evening air, clad in beauty, whiter art thou than flaming Jupiter, more lovely than the mighty monarch of the sky, and none but thou shall be my paramour. <sighs> now, worthy Faustus, methinks your looks are changed. Oh, friends. What ails, Faustus? Ah, my sweet, sweet chamber fellow. Had I lived with thee, had I lived still, but now must be damned. And look, comes he not? Comes he not? Oh, my dear Faustus, what imports this fear? He is all our pleasure turned to melancholy? He is not well with being over solitary. Well, if that be so, then we'll have physicians, and, and Faustus shall be cured. He is but a bit too much to drink, or an overabundance of supper. <laughs> yeah, nothing. An overabundance of deadly sin that hath damned both body and soul. Yet, Faustus, look up to heaven, and remember mercy is infinite. But Faustus's offense can ne'er be pardoned. The serpent that tempted Eve may be saved, but not Faustus. Hear me with patience, and tremble not at my speeches. Though my heart pant and quiver to remember that I have been a student here for thirty years, never would I have seen Wittenberg, never would I have read a book. And what wonders have I done? All of Germany can witness it, yea, all the world. I, heaven itself, heaven, the kingdom of God, the throne of the blessed, the kingdom of joy, and Faustus must remain in hell forever. Hell, oh, hell forever. What shall become of Faustus being in hell forever? Yet, Faustus, call on God. On God? Who Faustus hath abjured? On God whom Faustus hath blasphemed? Oh my God, I would weep. But the devil draws forth in my tears. Draws forth blood instead of tears, yea, life and soul. Oh, he stays my tongue. I would lift up my hands, but you see, they hold them. They hold them! Who? Why? Lucifer and Mephistopheles.
gave them my soul for my power. Oh, God forbid. Oh, God. God forbade it indeed. But Faustus hath done it for the vain pleasure of four and twenty years. Hath Faustus lost both eternal joy and felicity. I writ them a bill with mine own blood. The date is expired, the time has come, and the devil will fetch thee. Faustus, why did thou not tell us of this before? That defiance might have prayed for thee. Oft had I thought to. The devil threatened to tear me to pieces. If I called on God to fetch me body and soul, if I once gave ear to divinity. Now please leave, lest you perish with me. Oh, what may we do to save Faustus? Talk not of Faustus. Save yourselves and depart. God will strengthen me. I will stay with Faustus. Tempt not God, sweet friend. But let us into the next room and pray for him. Hi. Pray for me. Pray for me, but what noise soever you hear. Come not on to me. For nothing can rescue me. Pray thou, and we will pray that God has mercy upon thee. Farewell. If I live till morning, I will visit thee. If not, Faustus is gone to hell. Faustus. Farewell. Oh, if thou hadst given ear to me, innumerable joys would have followed thee. But thou didst love the world. Gave ear to me, and now thou must taste hell pains perpetually. These 
that are fed with sops of flaming fire gluttons and left only delicates and left to see the poor starve at their gates. Yet, all these are nothing. Thou shalt see 10,000 tortures that more horrid be. Oh, I have seen enough to torture me! Nay! Now thou must feel them. Taste the smart of all. <laughs> he that loves pleasure must for pleasure fall. And so I leave thee, Faustus, till anon. Oh, thy bewitching fiend! T'was thy temptation that hath robbed me eternal happiness. I do confess it, Faustus. And the choice, t'was I, that when thou wert on the way to heaven, damned up thy passage. When thou tookest the book to view the scriptures, then I turned the leaves and led thine eye. Weepest thou, tis too late. Despair. Farewell. <laughs> Fools that will laugh on earth must weep in hell. Oh, Faustus. Now thou hast but one bare hour to live, and thou must be damned perpetually. Stand still, you ever-moving spear of heaven. Time may cease, and midnight never come. O oh, fair nature's eye, rise, rise again. Make this but a perpetual day. Or let this hour last but a year, a month, a week, a day. That Faustus may repent and save his soul. Oh, run slowly, slowly, chariots of the night. The stars still move, time runs, the clock will strike, and the devil will fetch thee. Oh, I'll leap up to heaven. Who pulls me down? See where Christ Blood streams in the firmament. One drop of blood will save thee. Oh, my Christ. Rend not my heart for naming of my Christ. Yet will I call unto him. Oh, spare me, Lucifer. Where is it now? Tis gone. with an angry brow, a threatening arm. Oh, mountains and hills, come fall on to me and hide me from the heavy wrath of heaven. No, 
I will run headlong into the earth gate! Earth! No, it will not harbor thee. Curse you stars that reign divine nativity, whose influence hath allotted death and hell. Now draw up, Faustus, like a foggy mist, into the entrails of yon laboring clouds. That when you vomit forth into the air, let my limbs ascend from your smoky mouth. But let my soul mount and ascend to heaven. At the hour is past, it will all be past and gone. And my soul must suffer for my sins. What some end to this incessant pain? Let Faustus live in hell a thousand years, a hundred thousand. At last be saved. No end is limited to damned souls. Why wert thou not a creature wanting soul? Why is this that a mortal hast? Be this true, this soul should fly from me and be changed into some brutish beast, for all beasts are happy! For when they die, their souls are soon dissolved into the elements, but mine must live still to be planned in hell! Oh, curse the parents that engendered thee! No, Faustus, curse thyself! Curse Lucifer that hath deprived thee the joys of heaven. <laughs> it strikes! It strikes! A body turned to air! A Lucifer will bear thee quick to hell. Also, be changed into water, then may fall into the ocean. There to be found. <laughs> oh heaven, look not so fierce on the me. Anders and serpents, let me breathe on earth a while. Game not, come not, Lucifer. I'll burn my books. <laughs> oh, Mephistopheles. Faustus is gone. Regard his hellish fall, whose fiendful fortunes may exhort the wise only to wonder at unlawful things. Whose deepness doth entice such forward wits to practice more than heavenly power permits. <laughs> 